wind, a four-letter word that fishermen know all too well. Wind-powered early ocean travel and exploration. Where would we be today without wind? Offshore wind development is a hot topic in 2023. On this episode of Wind and Sea, we learn about the Block Island Wind Farm, America's first offshore wind project. Since 2016, that's when they started to operate. 2016 has only operated 30% of the time. The only turbines in New England currently are the five Block Island wind farm turbines. The energy that comes out of Block Island is costing at least six times more than the energy would have cost without that. That's six times the cost. And it escalates at 3% per year by contract. Who put the turbines up? Deep water wind, I believe, started. Uh, then it was sold to Orsted. They are in state waters, and they were cited using a state process that is very different from the federal offshore wind process. Look on a small project, tiny project. <clears throat> we're talking uh, 30 megawatts. <laughs> we're talking 1.3, 1.3 thousand megawatts. Tiny compared to what we're what we want to put here. So whatever problems you have in Block Island, multiply them by 50. But the cables where they come in are really serious too. I mean, in Block Island, it took them almost six years to put a cable in properly and then sink it because they kept unearthing. And it took a huge procedure and Block Island taxpayers got put on the line for I think another $30 million to fix this. They didn't want to drill into the into the hard soils and the, and the rocks and stuff like that. So they laid them on the ground thinking that it was going to be okay. But we, company that built it but didn't want the cost to go to them they wanted the cost to be to be put back to the repairs apparently it wasn't built with the best construction techniques because they've had a hard time keeping them running uh, they tried to convince us of the fact that four of them not turning for three months at a time is scheduled maintenance well, the maintenance on those on those turbines is extremely it's extremely costly I mean, you have to go up there, you have to re-lubricate them, you have to fix the blades and so on and so forth, and they're finding out as time goes on that it's been very costly. I don't think these things will be durable. I mean, the ocean erodes granite walls of rock, you know? And these things are nothing more than generators up on a stick. It's all they are. It doesn't work a lot because there's not a lot of money for maintenance. Um, because the company that put them in said, well, we, made, we learned a lot of stuff from that and we'll not make these mistakes again, but now they're going to build whole new, different kinds of plants. They're going to be much larger. We've seen a, a few less of this, a few more of that. But it's, since then, it has changed drastically in that area to the point where some of the guys don't bother going there anymore. Basically, the guys who used to fish there a lot, Lobson and Gilman, has said, they say it's turned into a dead zone in that area. Rhode Island is the ocean state. Do you feel like Rhode Island is looking out for their ocean? Not right now. You don't destroy the environment to save the environment. Where they put them is one of the most vibrant areas that existed on Block Island. We are building it without regard for traditional fishing grounds and we are building it without regard for safety at sea. As the Coast Guard has already demonstrated, they are unwilling to fly helicopters in and around wind turbines to perform a rescue. We lost a boat two years ago on New Year's Eve. Oscar Diaz, the mistress, went down. It was a foggy, windy, rainy night. They went out, attempted a rescue, and were called back by the powers that be and they let those men drown. Uh, now we have 1,500 square miles of effectively a no rescue zone. The helicopters don't have radars any better than ours. One of our friends was a dear friend of the pilot. He didn't understand why they get called back. After the dust settled, everyone surmised that the wind initiative, a presidential decree, couldn't take the black eye of a helicopter crashed into a wind turbine. Over here is somewhere where I picked up the death charge. 500 and something pounds of dynamite 
was in these things. Uh, this thing's only as big as like a beer keg. There's a pretty good chance that when they were doing their plowing for the cable and stuff that it took this thing up out of the sediment. There's also gonna be detonation of UXO. The idea was to either get a direct hit or close enough so that it blew the seams apart in, in the sub and then sank it. You're gonna dig up a lot of stuff when they're putting all these cables um, into shore. Generations of fishermen have learned where we can and can't tow our nets out of Rump Park Island. And now that's all changed. They, they dug that depth charge out of the bottom and moved it over to where, where we tow. Well, Glenn, Glenn would have caught it years ago. If not, he tows the same place every day. And there was a wreck there that we've been towing around for years. It was in pieces all over the place. I caught it twice. I caught the wheelhouse once and we caught the stern transom with, it, with the transmissions in it. You know, destroyed our net and it took us a couple of days to fix it. So it cost us, each time it cost us two days fishing. So they, they're gonna change all this knowledge that we've accumulated for years and years. These five are a fright for everyone going past the island. You know, a half a mile apart seems like a long way, but it's not at night. Or it's not when it's foggy. Or it's not when it's rough. Or it's not when there's two of you. They're, uh, they're ominous and frightening. They can't keep the running lights on them. I've had to call the Coast Guard on them a bunch of times and get them to wake somebody up and have them turn the lights on in the middle of the night so we don't run into them. We basically had the ocean to ourselves for a long time. When they finished completing the towers and they represented no more than raw vertical structure, we had a tremendous year catching codfish around the base of the turbines, trolling nets back and forth around them. And we caught a lot of codfish. Then the, the year that they electrified them, the very next year, I went from catching 20 or 30,000 pounds of cod for the winter to catching 100 pounds. I know that lobstermen that fish in that area in Rhode Island, because it is in state waters, say that the lobsters are gone. And it may be uh, Andrew Gill and uh, Dr. King, I forget his first name from URI, did a study about EMF, the electromagnetic frequency coming out of the cables and how it affected the lobster industry and whether or not they used cages, I believe, the documents online, and they put a cable through that area and the lobsters were willing to cross but they stayed in the very farthest area once they crossed of the cage. And the question is, did they want to get out of the area? But they couldn't, so they got as far away from it as they could. I don't know how they justify that, but they, they sold the ocean. Ocean lease areas have been sold for future wind farm construction, from New England waters to the Carolinas. Some fishermen say the East Coast is at stake. Some fishermen say it's too late. They're trying to get these windmills in the ground before the public wakes up. And I didn't know what would happen if I spoke up, but I knew that there was no going back. They, they couldn't offer me enough to cut off the hands of my fellow fishermen that feed their family because they want to give me a little bit of bribe money to just to be their, their puppet. 